Children. So you know what? He goes, I'm not going to play Children. I'm going to play Siphon Insights instead for the mirror. How about I just steal your Children's? Love that. I love everything about that. Let's take a look and see how things play out in this uh, Esper Mirror. How would you describe the matchup in general, Paul? Is it super grindy? Is it tempo-y? How does it go? Most mid-range matchups are grindy, but in general, I have not found that to be the case in the Esper Mirror. Play draw is extremely important. Of mm -hmm. course, it is for in most instances, but just because of the way that you want to curve out with this deck, right? Two drop into Rafine or Wedding Announcement into Wandering Emperor, uh, being on the place is, is really, really big because also there's just not that many tools to come from behind, right? Cards like Meat Hook Massacre are not legal and standard. If that was around, that, that was the kind of the card that you could rely on where if you're on the draw, you could still come back and win. But that doesn't exist anymore. So, very important to be on the play. And the person on the play or the person who gets kind of that ideal streamlined start oftentimes just runs away with these matches. Let's see how that plays out here. Both players looking at slow hands that don't have that curve out perfectly lined up. You do see Tenacious Underdog for Jakub, so he has something to do, but that's kind of it. Wow, so that, he's going to mulligan. Yeah, and look at that, you know, aggressive mulligan. Oftentimes, you're looking at a hand with four lands, three spells, snap keep, right? Mm -hmm. but, but Jakub going, you know what? I think I can do better. And I can afford to make this mulligan because there's only a certain collection of cards that I really want to see in my opening hand, especially when I'm on the play. Interesting, Carl Surratt faced a similar decision and said, you know what, I'm not going to do any better than this. So he kept the four <laughs> land three spell hand. It is slow. His first play, if things stay the same, will be a wedding announcement. And he does have two AOs to kind of clean up the mess later. But it is a slow start, and he just found a land off the top. There's Tenacious right. Underdog already on the battlefield. And if he doesn't find anything, he's going to take a lot of damage from this Underdog. Does he hit? No, nope. it's another land. And yeah, and that's a downside. Carl thinking, OK, I'm on the draw. I'm very likely to find a two drop or a removal spell oh, in turn two. But I mean, look at this start here I, from Jakub. I like this from Jakub. He very gets to strong. go Tenacious Underdog into double wedding announcement. That's right. difficult to and beat, even if you're doing stuff and, on Carl's and, side. And Carl, I mean, he has a wedding announcement of his own, but he's the one who's kind of on the hot seat here, right? You don't want to get your wedding announcement out late, yeah. right? Everybody's going to go to the party the week before, and uh, you're going to be in big trouble. And that's what it looks like here for Carl Ooh. Serap, though he has found his own second wedding announcement as well. Right. So if he can find a way to survive, right, if he can just weather the storm, next turn play another wedding announcement, he does have two AOs that allow him to kind of come back yes. in this matchup. And you can see Token holding back another token because Jakub Toth looks at it and says, hey, I want to build an army. I want tokens. I don't want cards right now. Now, four, uh, three four drops in hand here for Jakub. All of them fantastic. Another land drop from him would be perfect. But it, on the other side, it's wedding announcements flying around the table now. Yeah, Both players with two of them. And there's a land, but it's a tap land it's here. It's a tap land. However, I mean, Jakub still... This turn gets to attack with the underdog, not interested in trading off 1-1 tokens because he's going to be the one who's going to have an army of 2-2s two next turn. It may just be too much, right? It, his wedding announcements get to start transforming before Carl's, and even just single attack step could be enough. Now, Carl does have an AO the Dawn Sky. We know that it's got an extremely powerful uh, death trigger. And in this instance, he, he actually has multiple options if the AO dies, right? I mean, after next turn, he's going to have five tokens in play. And the secondary ability of AO, most of the time you want to just get a bunch of value, get some things from your library, put it into play. But it's not unreasonable to think, Carl thinking, look, you know, my back is against the wall. I'm just going to put two plus one plus one counters across the board. You know, we, we mentioned that Jakub has the tempo advantage because his wedding announcements transform first. Well, <laughs> Carl could flip that right back on its head with that AO trigger. And here we go, another two tokens, and now everything's getting plus one, plus one. Carl likely just slamming AO and, and, and hoping for the best. Not the worst, because his wedding announcement will also flip, so everything is just kind of looking to trade here, and then it'll just come down to what Jakob is working with. Now, Jakob does have that Shieldred in hand. Currently, Carl doesn't have an answer to Shieldred, right? Mm -hmm. So, And Carl do is down to 11 life. Right, so you could start leaning on that shieldred to kind of, uh, you know, do the final few points of damage here to Carl. Try to capitalize on that good start. 
Airtie resurrected, resurrected, also interesting in hand here for Jakub. I wonder if Jakub is just interested in attacking with everything. Now, if he does, that just completely wipes the board on both sides, right? Yes. And it's interesting, you would think if the Ao de Donsky blocks the Tenacious Underdog and Jakob goes Wandering Emperor, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, would be something that you'd want to do. Not great, because it gives a first strike, and then Carl can then use the Death Trigger on the Ao to put plus two, plus two counters on all of the remaining, remaining creatures. So don't see a great attack here from Jakob. So then you start to think, okay, what else do I do? What are my other options? Shieldred, like you right? said, right? It's Shieldred. Wandering Emperor not doing a whole lot here. One of, Ur the, one of the reasons AO is so well positioned. Urtai, you don't really want to kill the AO. No. If anything, you could consider using the second ability of Urtai, which is just counter, uh, excuse me, one of the ability on Urtai, which counters triggered abilities, <laughs> right? AO dies, there's a death trigger, and Jakob identifying no good attacks, I'm going to now lean on the Shieldred, hope you don't kill it. And so far, no answer for it, though. There's a Siphon Insight that you mentioned on our intro here for Carl Surratt. Maybe he could find a way to kill Shieldred. Yeah, destroy evil, infernal grasp, void rend. And Carl can't get too aggressive, right? Because Jakob is just threatening so much damage on the crackback. That's right. That quick start from having Tenacious Underdog on the battlefield that whole time. He found Make Disappear? Yeah, found a Make Disappear. Can attack safely with the AO, the Dawn Sky, but that's it. And then now Carl's wedding announcement will also flip. So now we're just going to have giant army on both sides of the battlefield. And I don't know about you, Marshall. Shields are looking kind of pretty, kind of good here. Not too right? bad. A 6-7. Drain you for a bunch every turn. It's right? hard to imagine better than this. Has a Plaza of Heroes or the back of Shieldred. Has Urtai to counter a removal spell targeted at Shieldred, potentially. Does have to be a little bit concerned with that Ao the Donsky. It is cracking in for lots of damage here. Vigilance so, so big in this matchup as both decks playing multiple copies of the Wandering Emperor. You can see Jakub taking a look at Plaza and uh, going, okay, and that could matter here too. Right, it's like, do I want to use this Plaza? But the thing is, remember, Carl also has his own Plaza. Mm -hmm. Could block with AO and, and protect it if you really wanted to. Give it hexproof and indestructible. Yeah, not, not entirely sure that Jakub has a good attack here. Perhaps just attack, just thinking, okay, if I just attack with everything, just because I want to try to push through some damage, mm -hmm. is that going to be okay here? Is the shield you're getting in too? Shield and attacking makes me feel like a wandering emperor kind of combat trick scenario would need to be, I, I just can't imagine you would let shield trade right, off for AO. But you're also looking at four open mana. This is so dicey, but I guess Jakob feeling the pressure of that Ao the Donsky on the other wow. side. Everything in the red zone here for Jakob Toth. Let's see how this combat plays out. And if you're Carl, you've got to be feeling pretty good about any type of instant or, or combat trick that Jakob could have. You have two make disappears here, right? You stole one from the Siphon inside, then you have another one of your own. So you just need to just line up the correct blocks. That's right. So you can use the AO to perhaps eat up a tenacious underdog, right? Wandering Emperor's not going to do anything. And Carl perhaps looking to line up some... Okay, Carl just looking to just clean up the entire board because Everything. the thing that he's most concerned about is the Shieldred That's because right. he doesn't have an answer. Yeah, I'm curious. I wonder if Carl suspects a replacement Shieldred here for Jakob, which he does happen to have. Right, so Carl should probably not look to protect the AO and just look to get value off of it. Let it die, put something else into play, maybe his own Shieldred, and keep up double make this appear. Carl Serap fell behind on life total early in this game when he drew a bunch of lands off of a slow keep, but he has now been able to leverage these late game cards to his advantage.
And you can All tell right. that Jakub is feeling the pressure Board here. Board clear. Let's see what AO the Don Sky finds for Carl Serap. You get to look at a lot of things, and it's a Rafine, a very large Rafine. Yeah, it is sized properly against what he's facing up against right now. And now, now Jakob has to consider the potential counter spells. He could just pass, right? Because Carl might be incentivized to just flashback Siphon Insight. Oh, right? sure. And if he and he can wait for that window to then resolve an instant of his choice. Running out of Shieldred seems not the thing that you want to do against all this open mana. The worst option. Airtight Resurrected and Wandering Emperor both at the ready here for Jakub. So he's just going to pass the turn now. Is Carl going to give him a window? He's not. No. He's going to keep right. up. Being Make patient. disappear, yeah. And Carl has got to be ecstatic. He's like, wait, I got the Shieldred off the battlefield? I don't have to worry about that? Right. He's right? down to six, but no Shieldred means he can actually survive yeah. there. And and now I think Jakub probably wants to go for an Urtai here, right? Yes. He's like, you probably have a counter spell, but I need to play something here. It's likely going to get countered. I mean, you could you could go for a Wedding Emperor, uh, excuse me, Wandering Emperor instead, and get that countered, and then use Urtai, but you don't want Ao to actually hit the battlefield. Right. It's much different if you air tie it out of the the stack versus if you destroy it when it's on the battlefield. That's a disaster. Yeah, still thinking about that last attack. Just losing the shield it seems kind of rough, but. He's trying to work a game plan where he gets this second copy down. Wow, okay, AO's going to hit as well. And is Rafine attacking? That Probably is the not. question. Yeah. And then now Carl has to consider, okay. I mean, Jakob, well, it feels like Jakob just has to put something on the stack here, right? Right. Like, you, you have to play something. Right. So he wants to play one of the, the, the spell if that you, has the least value to him. Well, if you play Urtai. Mm hmm. Right, and it doesn't get countered, and you kill the Rafine, mm -hmm. right? Then that's three attackers. True. Right, that's three attackers. Very high upside. So he's going to go with Wandering Emperor, probably figuring that this is the worst of his options. And Carl will have the counter spell. So now Jakob will be able to resolve a Shieldred, right, unimpeded. Doesn't have any good attacks on the ground. I don't think casting Urtai does you much good. You definitely don't want to just play it and kill Ao, right? right? You're not really advancing the board in any meaningful way. So probably just looking to use the Shieldred and go, you know what? Whoa, 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 whoa. He's in Second combat. Second main, yeah. use Shieldred Easy. and hope that uh, this is gonna this is gonna get Carl dead in three turns. Carl has a lot of ways to find an answer here. He also could just win. He has 10 power minimum in the, in the air. Yeah, doesn't have his own Shieldred, remember. So gonna have to find something here. He's with gonna flashback siphon insight. Okay. Does he find a removal spell? That would be nice. Or a shieldred. Looks like it's a wedding announcement, That's Paul. Not... A little slow here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still something. Yeah. Right? You can go land wedding announcement and keep up, make this appear. He if gets you a want. three three out of it. He does. AO is a free attack. Oh, excuse me, it's not especially free right. with the, the opposing Shieldred. So this is another point of damage that Carl's, uh, another you know two what points else? that he's going to take. You know what else he can do? He can use Airtie Resurrected to force Carl to draw. He could. If it resolves, it, it is not optional. Right, so now Carl did find Siphon Insight, and the nice thing about that card is you don't draw the card. Mm. Right, so you cast Siphon Insight to try to kill. You need to find a way to kill this Shieldred now. How much mana does he have? But left? Infernal Grass doesn't do it. He needs because he loses to the it's destroy evil. It's destroy evil or bust. It looks like this, you could find a void rent too. He can cast it. He. I, I don't believe he's played a land for the turn. Okay. Does he find it? Rafine's tower, tower is not good enough. And I think Jakob is going to take game one. It does look like he's edged out Carl Seraph in this opener. Wow. Oh, man, this was so close. And these judgment calls were huge, right? Jakob yeah. Toth with that massive attack a few turns ago trying to set up this second Shieldred. It did end up panning out for him, but boy, that felt like one of those critical junctures for sure. Yeah, Carl had several draw steps at finding an answer for the Shieldred, but just couldn't find it in time.
So up to 10 goes Jakub. And with only two mana available, he can just kind of have his way. He can go for Airtie Resurrected, and I don't think there's anything that can happen. He also maybe could just well, say go. Uh, you can't. You, so you can counter it uh -huh. by casting a Make Disappear and sacrificing the creature that it targets. Okay. But but then it would be go, and there's a draw step. Right. So you, uh, so he could just do it either way, right, I so suppose. Right. So you just, you just hold on to the Airtie. But also, also just lethal? an attack for everything. Yeah. So there are many different ways that Jakob can win this game. Yes. He is forcing through this last damage. And it's going to be Tenacious Underdog going the distance here for Jakub as it delivers the final blow. And that is game number one going to Jakub Toth. What a tough game to navigate. And we're going to see a lot of those over the course of the tournament here just because this mid-range mirror is very difficult to play. And it has a lot of inflection points that are win or lose. Yeah, and, you know, Carl, to his credit, did a great job of fighting back from that really aggressive start here from Jakob on the draw with that kind of slower start. But you saw the kind of damage uh, and pressure that a card like Ao puts on the opponent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, players are going to consult sideboards as we work our way into game number two of our second upper semifinal. We're here at the Magic the Gathering World Championship. We're at the Magic 30 celebration down here. We're kind of over by the, the art area. You can see all the people in line to, to buy pieces of artwork or get their favorite card signed by the actual artists who made the art. But this is a very large space. There's a bunch of layers over there where different planeswalkers, you can kind of get a look at what their living room looks like. And you can see the players pretty should be pretty familiar at this point with what they want to do to cyborg for the matchup here. Carl with Rona's Vortex to help deal with opposing AOs. Interestingly, Jakob doesn't ha is not bringing in all three copies of Cutdown on the draw, hmm. which is a card that's very important to find a w to to kill Rafine. But I trust his judgment more than mine. There's a reason he's in the top four of the World Championship. Also, testing with some fantastic partners, Ivan Flock, Andrei Strasky, also a part of the testing team that he actually hired to help him for the wow. testing. So no, was not well spent. two Pro Tour champions to help you in your testing for the World Championship, I think it paid off. You think it's like when you have somebody come help you move and you're like, I'll buy the pizza, or <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll more see. contractual <laughs> than that, yeah. yeah. At any rate, uh, well chosen there for Jakub. Looks like he's having a quick chat with one of our tournament administrators. But game number two is underway. This time, Carl's going to be on the play. Losing a narrow game there to Jakub. Great openers from both players, Carl. If you he would, you would love to just draw some lands naturally here, so you can go turn two Denik into turn three Rafine. Doesn't find a land, then we'll likely have to fire off those Siphon Insights to uh, find a land potentially. Yeah. Caves of Coilos will do the job here. And there's Denik, Pius Apprentice, hitting the battlefield. Is there an answer in the hands of Jakub? Yeah. He's got Infernal Grasp. Yeah, could go Grasp. He has access to Grasp into Wedding Announcement on three. Might just look to hold off on it. If Carl counters a Grasp, I don't think Jakob is too sad. And now, Jak uh, now excuse me, Carl can't find land number three, so we'll prob we'll, we're probably going to see a main phase Siphon Insight to try to find a land here. Tough spot there for Serap. Jakob does need to consider here uh, p potential Kaito. Maybe you have to do a Kaito check. Does Carl play Kaito? Because then you don't want the Denik to attack. He has and, two in his sideboard. Right, and if you're on the play, you're definitely going to bring them in. It's I think Kaito is one of those like play draw type cards. Right. You will often see players bring it in when they're on the play and not bring it in when they're on the draw. Jakob also has Kaitos, did not bring it in for game two. And Jakob, aware of this interaction, is using Infernal Grasp inside of combat, but before an attacker has been declared. Carl's going to respond with Siphon inside. This, like is just an, in, this is just an efficiency play here. Yeah. Right. Could, of course, just do it in second main. Right. But he's not just 
taking something right away, which tells me it might not be a land. That would be a shame. Oh, and he misses. He missed on Lance, hits Void Rend, and this one could fall apart oh, very no. quickly for Carl. Surely he only has another shot or two to get it as Wedding Announcement right. into Wandering Emperor, into Ao the Dawn Sky is going to bury land him. Land, 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 land. And there's okay. a Caves of Koilos for Carl. And you will see a removal spell here probably. No. Prioritizing Rafine instead was thinking maybe Carl would consider finding a removal spell to get Wedding Announcement off the battlefield. But remember, if Rafine is not answered, Carl then gets additional draws at Lance. Yeah, right? and he really needs those right now. Those loots would be very, very important. Jakob going, do I just main phase this Wandering Emperor just because? Right? It's it, just because Carl might have a counter spell. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's choosing not to go for it here. Yeah, it's tough. Rafine with that Ward 1 really Carl annoying needs, in these situations. Yeah, and Carl has to attack, so he's going to take some damage here. Doesn't have an answer to the... Yeah. Doesn't find... He finds <laughs> a backup Rafine, but that's yeah. not really what he's interested that in. Is, that is not where you want to be here. He can go wedding announcement and start building up, but again, he finds himself a bit behind on board. Yeah, but, but so if he goes wedding announcement, make a token, Jakob goes... Wandering Emperor probably ticks it up, mm -hmm. right? Because next turn you get to untap and then exile the Rafine. Yeah. But Carl does have Void Ren, right? So, so actually curious, is he just going to go for token just to get the value? So even if Carl does have the Void Ren, you still have a creature in play? He does. Oh, that Void Ren came in handy at least. But Jakob gets to attack. I wonder, does he want to go for... Okay. Sometimes you consider just attacking with one just to make sure you have a bigger army because next turn, at the end of this turn, Wedding Announcement is going to flip, but valuing the card here instead. And, I mean, look at this army here from Jakob. Huge board from him. You can see why he would prefer to have a card here. He is out of gas, although in this standard format, being out of gas means you have two spells in hand that are also lands. <laughs> right, yes. You see Odawara and Takanuma there for him. But he did find Destroy Evil as well yeah. from that trigger from Wedding Announcement. And, and that's the thing about this deck. You can play Plaza of Heroes, does something in the late game. You get to play all these channel lands. So even in the late game, you just have access to a lot of these utility lands, which, you know, give you that little bit of an edge, right? It's really hard to, to run out of gas with this deck. That's usually not the problem. It's, it's more about getting things onto the battlefield in a timely fashion. This is such a tough position to be in if you're Carl because you have a Rafine, but with a Rafine in play, you want to be attacking, but you're just brickwalled here, right? Yes. So all you have is just that 2 5 flyer on defense. Yeah, things looking really rough here for Carl Serap as uh, he's facing down a heck of a lot of pressure now from Jakob Toth, both on his life total, but also just the cards in hand. Destroy Evil can kill Rafine. Odawara can send it packing. Yeah, I mean, Jakob. Jakob basically has a lethal attack here, right? Because you can go destroy evil on Rafine, Odawara, whatever. Oh, okay. This is aggressive. I mean, probably the type like, of thing that needs to happen. Oh, look at this. Jakob's going, thinking, do I, do I hmm, counter? Maybe I just put a bunch of counters on it's, my creatures. It's basically like putting a 6-6 six, six into play. Yeah, look right? at this. He's okay. going to do it. Carl goes, well, that, that, that was not ideal. I think that's just game, right? Yeah, you destroy evil Rafine and attack with everything. Right. Easy game here for Jakob Toth. He's just been able to curve out some stumbles on mana. Not even that. You know, he missed one man, one land drop, now another one. And uh, that's going to do it for Carl Serap, I think. I don't see any way out for him. And, and, you know, one thing that I want to kind of point out here in these mid-range matchups that we've seen so far in the semis is you see people trying to next level each other by playing these cards that are a little bit slower. You see yep. the Bank Buster, you see the Siphon Insight, but that's the beauty and the power of this Esper mid-range deck. You want to go long? Well, I can just kill you really fast, that's really right. quickly. You have all these cards that just pump your team, put counters on things, where oftentimes you just can't execute on that game plan of trying to go super long. Don't go too cards. slow, or this yeah. is exactly what will ha happen. Jakub Toth picks up the first win. You can see he's stoked about it, and that was a huge and well-earned victory there over Carl Serap. Again, just to remind you, we're in the upper semifinals, so Carl's still very much in the tournament, but he's got a much 